Hello, and welcome to the Book Speaks podcast, where the book speaks for itself. I'm your host, Benjamin Douglas, and this is the show where each week I read a chapter from a different indie author. Thanks for joining me for today's reading. Hi all, and welcome to episode number 12, Do's, of the Book Speaks podcast, where the book speaks for itself. It's an exciting episode today. We have a number of firsts for the show, one of which is that the author being featured, L. Casey, is a hybrid author. I think that's our first hybrid author for the show, which means um, she's both self-published as an indie author and she has some books with a traditional publisher, which is Montlake Romance. So a big thank you to Elle for letting me feature her today. Uh, the other first is that I will not be performing the reading today. I have a guest narrator instead. <laughs> I'll be playing an audio sample from the first chapter of Drifter's Alliance, book one. That is the first in-series book for Elle's um, sci-fi series, Drifter's Alliance. And uh, this was at Elle's recommendation, and I checked with the narrator, and she gave her thumbs up. So I have permission secured for this. Very excited because she's a professional narrator. This is Elizabeth Phillips. Just to plug her really quick, she is available for work on ACX. If you're looking for a narrator and if you like what you hear, this is Elizabeth Phillips who will be reading today. All right, I'm going to talk a little bit more about L. Casey, but before I do, I'm going to share some news, which is that, as I mentioned last week, I now have a mailing list for myself as an author with a mailing list magnet, Woo! which is a free science fiction story. Uh, it's, it's called The Trials of Eo, and it's, a, it's an entry, it's a prequel story to my forthcoming series, Starship Fairfax. It's exclusive to my mailing list. If you sign up for my mailing list, which you can get to um, from last week's show notes or from my website, http colon slash slash benjamindouglasbooks.wordpress.com, you get a free copy. I also, over the course of this past week, pushed publish on my first title as Benjamin Douglas on Amazon, which is another short prequel story to the same series. This story is called Totaled. If you want to check that out, right now it's 99 cents on Amazon, but my plan is to make it perma-free. I'm just still setting up my vendor account with Barnes & Noble, having some trouble with that. Um, it is 99 cents though on Amazon right now, and it's also free on Smashwords. Uh, if you are comfortable going to that distributor. So check that out if you're interested. It's called Totaled. Um, and uh, both that and The Trials of EO are short story entry points into my forthcoming science fiction military series, uh, Starship Fairfax. So thank you for your interest. Thank you for humoring me <laughs> as, I, as I mentioned that today. And because today's reading is fairly short, I'm also going to have uh, a second edition of the poetry reading. Yay! <laughs> so, here's another poem of mine. It's called Echo. I hope you enjoy it. I remember voices in the dawn and clinging to the lawn to climb it. Pine cones popping, sticking to the walls. Before the singing, there were noises. They are gone. And in their place, the ringing of a million billion suns, their cobwebs flung across the sea of time, declares the flame of memory dim before itself. To be alive has always been to capture light and sound and sweat as in a fishing net, to see the echoes of the distant quasars shooting through our history and document them. Now the spinning wheels of astral arms have held us close to suckle, and the heaving breast of time descends to fill our hearts. In youth 
we once believed in love and art. From childhood dreams, we see our futures written, scrawled across the sky in stardust, song, and blood. But we are not the bodies that we once discovered in the mud. And we are not the dreamers, or the singers, or the stars. We are the echo of a precious piece of memory, shooting, ringing, not the bodies, not the voices, but the art. All right, that is my poem, Echo. I hope you enjoyed it if you're into poetry. And if not, thanks again for humoring me. It's my show. What are you going to do? <laughs> Back to Elle Casey. I'm now going to read her Amazon author bio and her Amazon author rank beta. So here's Elle's bio. Elle Casey, a former attorney and teacher, is a New York Times, USA Today, and Amazon best-selling American author who lives in France with her husband, three kids, and a number of horses, dogs, and cats. She has written more than 40 novels in less than five years and likes to say she offers fiction in several flavors. These flavors include romance, science fiction, urban fantasy, action adventure, suspense, and paranormal. And then she has a list of all of her titles in uh, her bio, and I'm not going to read that out loud because it's quite a long list, <laughs> and um, I don't think it would make for the most entertaining audio, but I will say she's organized the list by genre, and those genres are romance, romantic suspense, contemporary urban fantasy, science fiction, from which we're reading today, dystopian, and paranormal. Um, she has written a lot of books. And this is, I think, probably one of the secrets to Elle's success. I, don't, I, I mean, I, I don't know a lot about her personal author story, except that she is quite successful by most indie author standards, certainly. And she's a hybrid author, after all. But one of the secrets has to be her, her prolific um, career. She has just been pumping books out. So um, on with the rest of her bio. She writes, a personal note from Elle. If you've enjoyed any of my books, please take a moment to leave a review on the site where you bought this book, Goodreads, or any book blogs you participate in, and tell your friends. I love interacting with my readers. So if you feel like shooting the breeze or talking about books or your family or pets, please visit me. You can find me at www.lcasey.com. And then there are links to her Facebook, L. Casey, the author, and her Twitter, L. Casey. Want to get an email when my next book is released? Sign up here, lcasey.com slash news. And that's for a sign up to her newsletter or mailing list. All right, and because it's quite impressive, I'm also going to read Elle's Amazon author rank beta. And this is as of June 2nd, 2017. Elle Casey, number 69 in books, literature, and fiction, contemporary. <laughs> It's awesome. <laughs> Number 69. So in the top 100, not even <laughs> not even in the Kindle ebooks sub, but just in books, <laughs> literature and fiction, contemporary. Um, so kudos to you, L. Not that you need my kudos, <laughs> but you uh, clearly know what you're doing. A couple observations from this prawny noob about um, L. Casey. <laughs> Good grief. I first encountered L. Casey, as I first find many of the authors I've read from on the show, on the forum K-Boards in the Writers, the Writers Cafe. And uh, L. Casey is sort of a big fish in the Writers Cafe. <laughs> if she drops into a thread and says anything, everyone pays attention. There's a handful. There's like maybe like 10 to 20 people if I had to pick 
who who I would categorize that way on keyboards, and she is definitely one of them um, because she's so successful and prolific, and she's been doing this for a few years now. Uh, peripherally, some of the things that I've noticed, her her covers are all beautiful, all the time. Um, her website is one of the most well-organized, easy-to-find things on, and attractive-looking author websites that I've seen. So check that out, lcasey.com. Um, obviously, she's very prolific, as I've mentioned. I also, I find it fascinating that she's in so many different genres, some of them sort of only related by the fact that they are genres and not like, you know, literary fiction. Um, and she's not using pen names for these. I mean, she might have pen names I don't know about for <laughs> like erotica or something. I don't really know. I don't mean to infer that. I, but she's doing all these other genres just with her name, L. Casey, which kind of flies in the face of some conventional wisdom for self-publishing, which says that if you're going to branch out, first off, you shouldn't into different genres because you're spreading yourself too thin and that's dangerous, <laughs> right? You're going to lose your readers. Uh, they're going to lose interest. And second off, if you do, you should use at the very least different mailing lists. I don't know if she does that or not, but you should probably also use different pseudonyms, different noms de plume. Uh, and she does not do that. Apparently, she's just L. Casey all day long. So um, I find that fascinating and frankly, just really inspiring because as an aspiring author myself, you know, I'm writing science fiction right now. You better believe I have interest in fantasy. Okay, well, those two have a lot of spillover. But what if someday I also want to write like a post-apocalyptic novel or a suspense thriller, right? Well, guess what, guys? L. Casey did it, <laughs> and she's doing great. So um, not to say that we should all just try to be L. Casey, because there's one and only, I think. But um, she is an example, a shining beacon of hope for those of us who uh, um, sort of chafe at that piece of conventional wisdom. The book from which you'll be hearing today, book one of the Drifters Alliance science fiction series, uh, has three more titles scheduled to come out before the end of this year, so I want to plug that. If you like what you hear, keep an eye on Drifter's Alliance by L. Casey. Three more titles coming up. And I also want to mention that L. is running a promo this week, in the first week of June 2017. She's um, promoting her post-apocalyptic series, Apocalypsis, and the first in-series, Cajalte, is free this week. So go grab that um, free book by a very successful and popular hybrid author. If you're listening to the show in the future and uh, you missed that promo, have no fear. Go to lcasey.com. She has a link in her menu that says free books. And she has loads of free books for you. Uh, they look like they're mostly first in series, you know, entry points, um, permafreeze. Check those out. They're very cool looking. Next week on the show, episode number 13, <clears throat> I'm going to be doing, drum roll please, brrr, my very first author interview. You know, it's funny, whenever I approach an author about being featured on the show, I always say as part of my plug, there's no interview, so your time commitment is minimal. <laughs> but next, week, next week's author, Elizabeth Ann West offered to do an interview. So I said, sure, why not? That sounds great. Uh, so if you if you know of Elizabeth Ann West, or you're just interested in author interviews, especially if you have any interest in Jane Austen, uh, because we'll be discussing a Pride and Prejudice variation novel, and uh, Elizabeth Ann West has written a number of those, then do stop on by next week to hear the episode. There's going to be an interview and a reading as usual, so it's going to be a lot of fun. All right, without any further ado, on to today's reading. I want to remind you, the narrator today is Elizabeth Phillips. She is available for work on acx.com. This is Elizabeth Phillips' reading of L. Casey's Drifter's Alliance, Book One, a sample from Chapter One. Thanks and enjoy. 
everything I've worked for, dreamed about, studied, and planned, everything I've suffered and sacrificed and paid for with tears and strife, everything has come to this. A single moment in an underground bar in Centurion 4, the farthest dark settlement station in the Triangulan Galaxy. I'm sitting at a table covered in scars and nicks, its surface stained with the droplets of ten thousand ales and liquors and the occasional splatter of blood. Across from me is a man who has what I want, what I need, and I'm not leaving here without it. My nostrils quiver as the odors coming from the bar and the people surrounding us intrude on my thoughts. Man, this place stinks like a goat herd's biodome. I know this from personal experience. Being a grounded drifter at 16 means when someone has a job that pays credits and includes the occasional meal, you say yes please, even if it means shoveling goat shit into disposal units all day long. Sitting across from me is the only man stupid or cocky enough to ante up his driftership in a single hand of gibbet, a smuggler, chancer, and sometimes dirty rotten thief otherwise known as Landglade, commander of the Kinsblade fleet. Not bad looking with that wavy dark hair of his but not so great either. His nose has been broken about five times too many for him to ever be called handsome, and he's a little too old for my taste, pushing forty-odd old earth years if he's a day. In the middle of the table is the pot, and the better give it hand takes all. One hand, one winner. That's it. Landglades anteed up the ownership papers to his number three drifter ship, and I've contributed the only thing I have left of any value. A promissory note offering up my virginity. In a place like this, anyone would be hard-pressed to determine which was the more valuable treasure. I'm biased, of course, having guarded my precious innocence for a full nineteen years now. But even I'm not sure. I've wanted to captain my own DS for as long as I can remember, and I'm so damn close to that goal right now, I can already taste the vapors running through her lines. Landglade's lazy voice cuts into my thoughts. So, what's it going to be, Cass? Girl of unknown origin, smart enough to play a fair hand, but stupid enough to bet against me? You going to pick a card and call it a night, or what? The cocky bastard looks to his left and right as he rests his elbow on the table, a boastful smile lighting up his dirty, scarred face as he puts on a show for the many onlookers that surround the table. And when I say call it a night, I mean... Get in my bunk, of course. He turns his attention back to me, his accent growing thicker as he notices my hand resting on the knife I keep next to me at the table. Better save your energy. You're going to need it, lass. Bile fills my throat. Bunk in with him? Not in this lifetime. I'd rather stab him in the heart and be hung for the crime. I didn't say no a thousand times over to a bunch of really cute guys just to lose my woman shield to a dog like him. Raucous laughter flows over my head, but I barely hear it. I've been pretending to care what they think, pretending to be sweating this game, all the while concentrating like an A-level bore drill navigator. I'm watching for Landglade's tell, the sign that will clue me in to his gibbet. I know he has one worth taking. He's way too happy right now for me to believe he has nothing in that hand of his. I'm just not sure whether my prize is the card his gaze keeps flicking to, or the one his eye avoids. When his pinky finally moves, twitching over the card he's taking pains not to see, I know. I suddenly know, with every instinct in my body screaming, Give it! It's there! Take it from him now! When the dealer taps the table on my side, signaling my turn to choose a card from Landglade's hand, I reach over and pluck the card second from the left, without hesitation. Or so it seems to the crowd. But of course I hesitated. It might only have been a fraction of a second, but it was long enough for me to wonder at his question. Would I walk away from the table tonight with a DS, a drifter ship to call my own? Or would I walk away doomed to a life of selling my body and soul to survive? Because after this game, those are the only two possible outcomes left to me. I've spent every single food credit I've ever managed to save to get this table tonight. I turn the card over as it reaches my hand, and a smile twitches at the corner of my mouth. My heart is almost exploding with relief and the adrenaline that comes from such a win. It's all over but the crying and bloodletting now. There's no way he can beat me, and there's no way he can refuse to hand over the ship, 
There are too many witnesses, several of whom he does business with who wouldn't allow a guy to live who doesn't pay off his debts owed fair and square. Tucking the King of Hearts in with six other winning cards, I wink at Landglade. Save your own energy, you ugly son of a bitch, because I'll be sleeping in your bunk alone tonight. You sure about that? He lays his cards out, letting each one flick on the table individually so everyone can add them up as they fall. My heart pounds in my chest so hard it almost feels like it's trying to escape. Then the tally comes together in my head, and I can breathe once again. Close, but not close enough. Thank all that the universe holds. I place my cards on the table all together, leaving off the dramatic flair displayed by my opponent, and then lean back in my chair with a go-fall-in-a-black-hole smile beaming out from my hot, dusty face. The entire group of scruffs and thieves around us swears and shouts in surprise when they see my hand and realize how thoroughly I've whipped his sorry ass. That's a faux blockade, I say, winking at the loser across the table. Ace is high. This concludes another episode of the Book Speaks podcast, where the book speaks for itself. Thanks for joining me, your host, Benjamin Douglas for another indie author reading. If you liked what you heard, be sure to visit http colon slash slash thebookspeakspodcast.wordpress.com for more episodes and for links to the author's website and the author's Amazon author page in the show notes. If you'd like to follow me on my own author journey, you can find me at http colon slash slash benjamin douglas books dot wordpress dot com and of course if you're an indie author interested in having your work featured on the show or if you're interested in discussing having your book read and produced by me as an audiobook feel free to contact me at benjamin douglas books at gmail dot com Thanks for joining me today. I hope you have a productive and enjoyable weekend.